Italian cooking where you see cooking from my point of view. I'm a huge fan of appetizers. Sometimes I could just eat, you know, appetizer or antipasta instead of having a big meal. Well, I was cooking a big meal, but it was going to take a while. This, this meal, which you'll see in the next video, had to kind of cook for a while. Um, we were hungry, so I thought, okay, I need to, I need to make a, a nice appetizer. So what I did is I made bruschetta two ways. So you're going to see a kind of a traditional tomato bruschetta. And then I made a cold cut bruschetta. Uh, and the way I like to do my cold cut bruschetta is with some glazed onions. Because I just think that mixed together just makes it kick. So anyway, let's get started. Because I want to show you how I make my bruschetta. Everybody makes theirs a little differently. But here's how I do mine. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the ingredients for our bruschetta and today we're doing bruschetta two ways. We are going to do your traditional, well traditional for me, tomato bruschetta where I like to use tomato, very thinly sliced shallot and very thinly diced uh, garlic. Probably two to three cloves of garlic. We'll probably use almost all this shallot and then we're going to cut and de-seed all of our tomatoes. The second way we're going to do it is a cold cut bruschetta. I have some capicola and I have some prosciutto. What I'm going to do is I'm going to very thinly slice this red onion and then I'm gonna caramelize the onion in some olive oil on the stove, get those really good and caramelized. And this is going to be fantastic. So bruschetta, two ways. Let's get started. So I have resituated over by our stove. I'm taking my tiny little cast iron pan here, which may not be big enough, but we're gonna go with it. A little bit of olive oil in the pan. I want to get this hot. And then all I'm going to do is what I, I got my red onion here and I put it through my mandolin so I get a consistent size and thickness. And all I'm going to do, yeah, I should use a bigger pan, but this, this will be all right. They'll cook down. Just take a little bit longer. So we're just going to go ahead and caramelize our red onions. This is probably way too many, but you know what? I'd rather have too many than not enough. We're just going to keep turning these until I get them caramelized the way I want them. The heat's a little high here. And when I get them done, we'll be back. So my onions are pretty much the way I want them. You know, you guys, if you like your onions really, really done, then, you, you know, you're controlling it, the cooking, so you can make them however you want. These are how I like them. So all I'm going to do for now, turn the heat off here, and I'm just going to put these on the back burner because I'm not quite ready for them yet. So now uh, my beautiful sous chef has finished uh, chopping up the tomatoes. So we're going to reposition and build our tomato bruschetta. Okay, now for our tomato bruschetta, we've got our tomatoes here. And you can see we've got this chopped up pretty fine. So we'll put them in the pool. We have one shallot, finely minced. Put all that in there, probably just about all of it. There we go. Then we've got some garlic. Now I have way too much garlic here. So use about half of it. I say way too much and it's really not way too much. Now we are going to put some salt and pepper. Now our pepper. Now I'm not gonna just use regular old olive oil for this. I kind of keep some Toscano uh, olive oil and this is just a Tuscan, a 100% Tuscan olive oil from Bellucci. It has a much more peppery taste than your standard uh, olive oil, even your standard Italian olive oil. This is much more peppery. It's got bite to it. So I love it for finishing and I also use it for my tomato bruschetta. So we drowned it in olive oil like so. Then we're just going to stir this up. Now I can tell you to step this up a little bit, if you have some pesto, which I do not have, I do have some basil. That's what this needs. I'm gonna stop and get the basil and I'll be right back. I've got basil. I wish I had fresh basil. I don't, but this is the next best thing. This is lightly dried basil and it keeps this nice green collar. They probably, knowing my luck, they probably paint it green so it stays green. But anyway, throw a little bit of that in there. Probably, I feel like it needs just a little bit more olive oil. Man, a pesto steps this up really well. So a little bit more basil. I love basil. You probably know that if you've seen any of my other videos. When I call for basil, I put more in than 
probably most people. It's my love affair with basil. I can't help it. My wife understands that one. She's accepting of that. Um, little bit more olive oil. Then all I'm gonna do is cover this with some uh, plastic wrap and put it in the fridge so it has time to kinda, you know, sit and flavorate. That's a new term, flavorate. So this is ready to go. So now I'm gonna break away, clean this mess up. When we come back, we're gonna talk about our baguette. So now that I've got my onions caramelized, my tomatoes are in the refrigerator, the next thing to do is to cut out a baguette. And this is a French baguette from the North Market from a mega bakery. Uh, I live in Columbus, so it's the North Market in Columbus. If you ever get a chance to get to Columbus or you happen to find your way to Columbus for a conference, get to the North Market. Oh, it looks like I'm chopping my hand off there, doesn't it? All right, what I like to do with my baguette is I like to cut them cross. And this is mainly because it gives you more surface space. And I like to cut them about that thick, probably a little too thick. Try to make them a little thinner here the next couple. So that's how I cut them. Now, another thing I like to do with, with my baguettes now, or for, for my bruschetta, everybody tells you their way to do it is correct. Well, I'm gonna tell you everybody else is wrong and I'm right. The way I like to do mine is I brush them with a little bit of olive oil and I put them olive oil side down. So I'm finishing up my last few and as you can see, I, I like to brush them pretty heavily with olive oil. Again, olive oil side down. Again, these will go in the oven probably five minutes at 450 and then if they don't start to get collar to them, I will crank on the broiler and keep a real close eye on them so I don't burn them like I did uh, my garlic bread there. If you happen to catch that episode, that was fun, right? Um, then once I pull these out of the oven, we will build bruschetta two ways. Just took our bread, our French baguette out of the oven. You can see they got just a little bit of collar. These are perfect. So over to our table. Now I'm going to grab the tomato out of our, um, out of my refrigerator. When I get back, we're going to start building these. So now what I'm going to do, we're just going to take a piece of bread. Now remember we're doing these two ways. So what we're doing on one way is we're going to do a tomato topped bruschetta. Just put a just nice heaping tablespoon of tomato on each one of them. Yes, these will be messy. Yes, you will drop tomato. And yes, your uh, significant other may laugh at you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one row like that. And then what I'm gonna do is on the tomato, I'm gonna fish, finish them with a, a nice uh, balsamic glaze. Now for our other ones, our cold cut bruschetta, we're just gonna take a piece of capicola or a piece of prosciutto probably do a couple pieces because this is very, very thinly sliced uh, capicola. We'll just take them like this. And then we take a little bit of our onion, our caramelized onion, and we go on top of them like so. Bruschetta two ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and build the rest of these. And then when I get back, we're gonna taste them. So I've got our bruschetta two ways, ready to roll. Let's get two of these on our plate. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So what I've got on my plate is the capicola with um, some glazed onions and the tomato bruschetta. And I'll tell you, I've made this tomato bruschetta a hundred times and I just love it. Mmm, mm, it's good. It's incredible. We shaved a little bit of Parmesan over it, finished it with the balsamic glaze. Couldn't be better. The sweetness of that basil, the pepperiness of that Tuscan olive oil is good stuff. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So now we're gonna try the capicola with some glazed onion. Mm. Mm, it's good. The onions are really adding a punch of flavor. It's a mild capicola. It's not the hot capicola. Very simple. Bruschetta. Great for a party. Great for entertaining. 
highly, highly, highly recommend it. With that, let me swallow here. Mmm, yummy. And thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Mmm, crumbs everywhere. But most importantly, click that subscribe button on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and ciao. Yummy!